So there are two forms that parabolas are usually written in, or quadratic equations are usually written in. And you have learned what's called the standard form. And today we're going to talk about the vertex form for a quadratic or for a parabola. So let's review first. Standard form is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So an example of an equation in standard form would be y equals 2x squared plus 4x plus 1. And how would you graph something like this? What would you do to graph a parabola? Where would you start? Oh, South? You'd find the vertex. You'd find the vertex. And the vertex is, does anyone remember the equation of the vertex? Uh, negative x equals negative b over 2a. Yeah, negative b over 2a. And, and this you gives you x. x and then x. to find y, you have to look it in or do that thing. Yeah, so this gives you the vertex as x coordinate. And then you have to plug it in to find the y form, the y coordinate. Well, wouldn't it be nice if there was just a form? of the parabola where the vertex was obvious. That would be great. And it turns out there is. And guess what? They called it vertex form. How perfect. What a surprise. That sounds lovely. So we're not going to get to graphing these today, but I just wanted you to know, to know where this <coughs> comes from. Um, today we're going to talk about how do you get something into vertex form. So vertex form looks like this. y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. So an example of an equation in vertex form would be y equals 3 times x minus 1 squared plus 2. Converting this back to standard form is actually really easy. All we have to do is multiply this out and then simplify. Okay, so converting to standard form this is going to be the easiest part of, of vertex form. Converting to standard form, we take our equation, y equals 3 times x minus 1 squared plus 2. We start with the, the squared thing. So we're following order of operations, right? Parentheses, there's nothing we can do inside of our parentheses. Exponents, so now we're going to focus on our exponents. Y equals 3, and I'm going to keep parentheses here, so I remember to multiply this 3 times everything later. And then I'm going to keep my plus 2 over here. So what is x minus 1 squared? x squared minus 1. x squared. Oh wait, no. So that's x times x. Cool. Now, what am I really doing here? I'm doing a FOIL problem. x minus 1 times x minus 1. So then it's x one x. So I did this part. Oh, plus First, one, plus one, sorry, plus it's one. x squared. x times negative 1 is what? Negative 1x. Negative 1x. And, and then negative 1x times x is also negative 1x. And then also negative 2x. Negative 1 times negative 1. That's my last. What's negative 1 times negative 1? 1. one. Positive. Oh, no. OK, this isn't quite in standard form yet, because I have these weird things out front and off to the right. Parentheses, exponents, multiplication. So the next thing I'm going to do is multiply. Remember, all I'm doing is following my order of operations. 
y equals 3 times x squared is 3x squared. 3 times negative 2x, negative 6x. 3 times 1, 3. And then I have this plus 2 off to the side. And the last thing that I'll do is add my two like terms. y equals 3x squared minus 6x plus 5. So I went from vertex form. Now I have the same parabola in standard form. Questions about that, Sal? Um, up there, on um, the vertex form, mm -hmm. are the H and the K like the vertex points? The H and the K are the vertex points, the vertex coordinates. So together. Oh, so it would be like, oh wait, but this would be positive. Yeah, okay, no, sorry. <laughs> right, so it's important to notice that in this equation, just like remember um, point slope form, wait, which one's you have a negative in the equation. Which one's x and which one's y? Um, I, I think H it's h comma k. k. Okay. So your vertex is just this. Your vertex is h comma k, which is way easier <laughs> than negative b over two a comma whatever negative b over 2a plugged into the original standard form gives you for y. All you have to do is look at this, and with a glance, you can see the vertex. Okay. But it'll be the opposite so of it's if we were to take negative b here, negative 6, that's 6, divided by 2 times 3, that's 1. Right? 6 divided by 6 is 1. That's our x point right there. So you can kind of see how this relates. But the h is going to be the opposite of that number because it's right. negative in the equation. Right. Exactly. But we'll get to all that later. We'll get to the graphing stuff later. Um, hopefully you're just noticing these connections. OK. Should we do another example converting to standard form, or do you want to try one going the other way? Other way. Let's try one going the other way. You'll get to practice that on your homework, converting from vertex to standard form. Uh, not yet. We're just going to practice converting. Um, so let's say we have, and I'm going to kind of do this on a case basis. So case number one is going to be, what if A equals 1 and k equals 0. These are going to be the easiest ones to convert from standard to vertex form. And this is all you'll have on your homework. So if y equals x squared, so my a is 1, plus 6x plus 9. And I know that the k will be 0 in this problem, but you probably can't see that when you first look at it yet. So this is standard form. I want to convert it to vertex form. Does anyone notice anything about this? Topic? These are going to be this case, case one, are going to be very easy. Oh, because it's factorable. Yeah, this is factorable. And not only is it factorable, what do I get when I factor it? Not a difference of two squares. But Let's factor this. Yeah. So I need factors of Ooh, nine that add up to it's six. Yeah, it's a perfect x plus three and x plus three. It's yeah. a perfect square. Am 
Am I done? No. Yeah, we got to find axes. Wait, are you finding axes? I'm just trying to convert this into vertex form. Oh, yeah. Vertex form, zero. when A is 1 and K is 0, is just a oh. perfect square. That's all it is. So if I have a perfect square trinomial, converting that into vertex form is going to be relatively easy. All I really have to do is factor. Now this, the second and third cases of this will be a little more tricky. But what did we do when we didn't have a perfect square when we were factoring and finding zeros, what technique did we use? Finding the square. Completing the square. And so converting things into vertex form, you already know how to do, because you already know how to do completing the square. Can we continue this one just so that you explain it more so we can use our notes again? This is done. That's it. Okay, that's it. That is vertex form. So if you compare it to this, right, I can say I have the y equals, what's my a? 1, a is 1 in this equation, and then here's my x minus h, x minus negative 3, here's my squared, what's my k, right, now that looks a little bit more like this, but if I simplify this, I get this first thing here, so this is vertex form right here. And all the ones in the homework are going to be if A is 1 and K is 0. Right? Uh huh. Okay. Your homework will just be practicing these. So it'll really be kind of a review of perfect squares. So everything will be perfect, perfect squares in the homework. Right, exactly. Will it, will it when A is 1 and K is 0, you have perfect squares. Which one of the like a writer? Like I'll tell you. So I'll give you standard form and I'll say convert this to vertex form. And then I'll give you vertex form and say convert it. Basically, to you can convert it to the other one. <laughs> right. Oh, okay. Yep. That's good. So all you'll be practicing with this is factoring perfect squares. That's the simplest case. Okay. Any questions? Cool. I don't know if that video will be helpful.